Channel F, the one with all the fun. The Fairchild Video Entertainment System at your larger JCPenney. The home entertainment system that never gets old. Plug in a new video cart and change the fun. Play tic-tac-toe, shooting gallery, or just doodle. Switch video carts and play Desert Fox. Switch again, it's Blackjack. Or play the two built-in games, Pro Hockey or Tennis Champ. Channel F for fun. The Fairchild Video Entertainment System. Just $169.95. Video cart cartridges, $19.95 each. At your larger JCPenney. Hey folks, Crazy Climberade here again, and this time we're going to look at the Fairchild Channel F home video game console. It is the very first second generation home video game console. The uh, uh, system was initially known as the Fairchild Video Entertainment System, but when the Atari 2600 or Video Computer System came out, they changed it to uh, Channel F. But this was the first console with a pause function. It was also the first system to use ROM cartridges. It was the first console to allow first uh, player one versus the computer uh, games. And it was the first system to use a microprocessor. Some technical information about the Fairchild Channel F. It was created by uh, Fairchild Camera and Instrument Company in uh, November of 1976. It sold for $169.95. The F in Channel F stands for Fun. There were uh, 26 uh, U.S. released games, and it was discontinued in 1983. It had a 8-bit uh, Fairchild F8 computer there were uh, 64 bytes of RAM and 8 colors. There was a uh, 128 by 64 pixels resolution. There was 2 kilobyte video buffer. Uh, the system sold 350,000 units before its rights were sold to the Zircon International Company in 1979. Now this is a, another look at the console here. Note that the power switch is way in the back to turn the system on. And the top of the console can open up and you can store the controllers in there. Now here is where the system gets really confusing. There are an assortment of buttons at the bottom. Well, there's also the cartridge slot right there where you push the cartridges in. And there's an eject button to spit the cartridge uh, part way out to make it easier to pull out. But uh, the buttons that are confusing, there is a, a yellow button that simply resets the game. But then there are four buttons marked 1, 2, 3, 4. The first one can, uh, in some games, you can select the amount of time of your gameplay that you have. And with that button, it'll select two minutes of game time. And then uh, there is also one of the two games that came with the system that are built in and that's hockey for uh, button number one you can select it with that and uh, with button number two that's the mode button and uh, with some games you can change the settings uh, with that button and you can if you uh, chose to uh, change the amount of time for your uh, game you can use that button to select it to five minutes and you can also play the second game that came with the system which is tennis with button number three that can be a hold button and that acts as a pause which is awesome and during the pause you might be able to change the mode uh, that might change uh, various settings within that particular game and you can also use button number three for game number three. If you have a multi-cart game, uh, one game, uh, one cartridge that has a, at least a couple games on it, you can play uh, one of those uh, games with that button, and it acts as game number three. And then button number four can be uh, the start button that'll start your game. And if you chose to uh, change the amount of time for your game you might be able to use that button to put in 20 minutes and you can also play the uh, uh, second of a multi-cart game very 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 confusing 
So on some games you will get this G question mark and that will ask you which game you want to play. And that is when you have a multi-cart with uh, multiple games to select from on that same cart. Or if you're going to select between the built-in games of hockey and tennis. Or uh, sometimes if it's asking you if you want to play one player game or two player game. Then there is also a T question mark that might show up in a game and that's asking how much time do you want and that's where you choose between the one two three four buttons whether you want two minutes five minutes ten minutes or twenty minutes of game time then there is also an s question mark that might pop up and that is asking if you are ready to start and if you are then you press four and then there is also the m question mark and that's asking uh, what mode you want to play and that is where you can press 2 to change the mode. Uh, just change various uh, settings in the game. Well, this is the original controller. And it's really kind of weird, but it's very, very innovative. You hold it. It's, it's not standing upright. But uh, you hold it and you control the top. The top can act like an 8-way joystick. And you can also turn it left and right, like a, a dial. And then there is a trigger button on top for firing, or whatever uh, action button. And then later on, there was what's called a jet stick. And this has an added side fire button, or a fire button on the front. But it was uh, otherwise the same. And uh, next, we're going to take a quick look at the Channel F System 2 and this was released I think like 1979. This was a little bit different and this uh, stored the controllers in the back. It also had uh, different places for the uh, eject cartridge button and the cartridge slot. And up front there was the reset and uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 buttons but there was also the power switch button to the left of those instead of in the back with the uh, first Channel F system. Uh, this this uh, had six new games upon its release, or uh, uh, after it was released, and it had a better sound than uh, the first Channel F system. And this is the uh, cartridge typical uh, cartridge and its box and the cartridges looked very very much like eight track tapes <laughs> and again there were uh, 26 uh, official US released games and there was a uh, chess game released only in Germany but we'll go ahead and look at the games and we'll start with uh, cart number one and this is Tic-Tac-Toe, Shooting Gallery, Doodle, and Quadradoodle, released in 1976. And uh, we'll just look at at least a snippet of gameplay of each game that we're going to look at. And this is Tic-Tac-Toe here. And it's very simple. You just go against the computer, maybe uh, player number two, if you can uh, select a two-player mode, and just play uh, one game at a time of Tic-Tac-Toe. Very, very simplistic. The the sounds and color palette of the uh, Fairchild Channel F were very, very limited, uh, restricting its uh, appeal. That's what it looks like if you get a tie, and if you lose, it says you lose, Turkey. I like that. But uh, this time around, we're going to look at Shooting Gallery. Yeah, there were a number of uh, multi-cart games uh, some had four, some had like three, some had like two, most of them just one. This is Shooting Gallery, and uh, with the mode, you can change the angle of your uh, paddle there. And I guess you just try to get it past that little rotating uh, icon there. And if it touches it, then uh, you like seed a point to the computer. I'm not entirely sure how some of these games play, but uh, 
I, I tried at least to uh, have a little video of each game. And this is Doodle. This is just an art game. Uh, you can move your little cursor around. You can change its size. Uh, you can change its color to a, a one of, uh, I think, like five or six different colors or so. And uh, you can hold down a certain button and start drawing a line. And then uh, the final game on this cart is called Quadradoodle. And the computer does a demo of the uh, uh, of artistic uh, demonstration that you can do in the game. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. But yeah, it's very, very limited what you can do in a Doodle. But for a Quadradoodle, you can uh, you can interrupt the demo at any time and you can start drawing uh, where it left off and it's got these uh, colorful little patterns that it does fills up the screen with one pattern and then moves on to the next one like I said you can uh, stop it at any time and start drawing your own uh, extension of the uh, demo drawing See, I stopped it right there. And now we're going to look at cart number two. And this is Desert Fox and Shooting Gallery. We already saw Shooting Gallery. Shooting Gallery's on this too. So we'll just look at Desert Fox. And Desert Fox is Atari's combat. <laughs> Except it has mines here and you can run into the mines and see to point to the computer, I believe. Very, very very basic graphics and sounds and uh, colors which uh, which definitely did not work in uh, the Fairchild's favor but uh, two of the strong points of the system was the cool joystick that you can uh, twist the top left and right as a dial and press the button on the top and move the top as a joystick and uh, I also like that uh, you can change modes it's kind of confusing but uh, you can change modes to uh, try uh, certain variations of your game out and you get a point for what each shot that lands on your opponent and you get if you can get close enough you can just repeatedly shoot them over and over <laughs> well this is cart number three and this is video blackjack most of these games were released in 76 or 77. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, like I said, not entirely sure how to play every single game that I'm going to show you, but uh, well, at least look at me trying. <laughs> and here you play uh, against two other opponents, and you get to bet how much of your uh, chips you want to wager. But um, now we're going to look at uh, Spitfire. And this is a, a plain uh, version of combat where they have the, you fight, you uh, flying the fighter planes fighting each other. And that's, that's this. And you can change the mode so you might fly faster. Um, various different things. Um, you can crash into that tower there. <laughs> you can fly right through each other. Well, actually, we didn't crash in that there. But um, you can fly through the bottom and reappear at the top, and same as uh, left to right edges. Very, very, very crude uh, renderings of planes. But uh, try to uh, try to shoot each other. And there's weird animation when you get shot or they get shot <laughs> I had not I had not heard of the Fairchild back then but there are some things to like about it to admire and this is game number five and it is Space War 
and uh, we'll look at that in just a second here. And uh, you uh, you try to get to the opponent's ship and shoot it, and you can run into those mines on the way. Those uh, red red spheres you can replenish your fuel in them and you lose fuel when you shoot with your laser. Oh, that didn't uh, see the point to... M or any you don't... Uh, you might not score points specifically, you just try to drain the uh, other player of fuel. They lose fuel when they get shot. And again, uh, you can replenish your fuel by uh, touching that... Uh, touching that red sphere. I didn't do like a whole playthrough on any of these games. I just did little, showed little snippets. Uh, once one player runs out of fuel, then you uh, start another game over. Well, that's annoying. <laughs> and now we're going to look at Math Quiz. This is uh, Math Quiz Part 1, Addition and Subtraction. And it's just simple little equations. Yeah, we'll look more into what uh, game uh, start uh, time mode means later on. There are a couple of demo carts that you could get that would tell you uh, tell you what those mean. And we'll look at that later. But uh, you just go from one column to the next trying to solve an equation. And uh, you might be able to get really harder uh, equations by going into mode. Ta-da! That was pretty easy. <laughs> but uh, that is the addition part. And then you can, uh, you can select uh, game number two and go to the uh, uh, subtraction. And the there is a second math quiz game or a cart and it is called multiplication and division if you screw up uh, a couple times on the same equation then the game will show you the correct answer and uh, yeah this is the subtraction one and now we're going to look at game number seven, which is math quiz multiplication, multiplication and division. Yeah, for for 1976, really, uh, the Fairchild was pretty pretty darn innovative, pretty darn impressive. Um, even though the sound effects were not good and the uh, colors were pretty limited. But uh, we'll look at gameplay of, of each of these. I hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, we're going to now look at uh, game number eight. And this is Magic Numbers, Mind Reader, and Nim. And this is, uh, this is a guess what number the computer's thinking of type of game. You can choose to have a time limit on the uh, this game and the computer will give little hints about how close you are just start putting in any kind of number you can have like I think from two to five numbers if you uh, select it in the mode now it'll tell you uh, T and T I think is that one number in that is correct but it's in the wrong place and H means one of those numbers is in the right place so we're not to the H yet. And again, you're, you're timed. You can see your time ticking down, and you want to uh, get the right answer before time runs out. But this is the first of two games on this cart. The second one's really hard. I, I, do not, I cannot beat that one. <laughs> there, I got one of those numbers right. You just keep uh, tweaking the numbers, and uh, when, you, when you don't get that H anymore, then you'll know that you have one of the numbers wrong. So now I have two numbers correct. And I still do. 
So it was 6 and 4, something 6, 4. There, 764. That's the correct answer. Now we're going to look at NIM, and NIM is super hard. NIM is a game in which you have three piles of numbers, and you can uh, deduct from the piles. De de deduct as many numbers as you want, but what you have to do is leave, is have the computer leave one pile for you. And the computer is really good at this game. Good luck winning. I mean, you have to really, really know this game to, to have any luck at it. But uh, you and the computer alternate turns in trying to take down numbers off of one of the piles. You can, you can take them all if you want. But again, you want to try to get the computer to leave you one pile. And then if you have that one pile, then you take off the numbers off of it and you are the winner. But yeah, I'm no good at this. <laughs> and uh, you can select, you can have three or six numbers, I think, through mode. And now we're going to look at game number nine. And it's drag race. This really kind of sucks. It's it's kind of like um, the Atari drag race, the arcade game. And you can choose uh, your uh, gears. You have like one, two, three, and four gears. And you don't want to, like, have the gas all the way down or you'll blow your engine. But you you can alternate between, I think, two and four. And you just need to make enough uh, laps. And then you'll have reached the finish line and you'll win. Uh, unless you're, you've got another player controlling the red car. See, I'm driving the blue car, and I'm, I shifted into four, and now I'm just scrolling through the screen X amount of times, and then I'll see my finish line. This is really, really crude. Uh, the uh, Atari arcade game Drag Race was much better. <laughs> you even had uh, uh, walls that you tried not to uh, scrape against to slow you down because the computer was very good. I have a video of the arcade game of uh, Drag Race if you want to look at that. And there's my finish line, so I'm going to win. Winner. I don't know why it said winner in red when I'm the blue car. I don't know. <laughs> Some of these games are a little confusing to play. But at any rate, now we're going to look at game number 10. And this is Maze, Jailbreak, Blind Man's Bluff, and Trailblazer. It's four different games on this card, and it's uh, moving through a maze. You just try to get from one end to the other, and this is kind of like Amazing Maze of the Bally Astrocade. But um, you just try to get from one end to the other before the other player does. Ah, that's annoying. Bad for the ears and bad for uh, the eyes for uh, uh, Yikes. And this one has this one has invisible walls. Ouch! You're gonna, you're gonna destroy your eardrums trying to trying to find your way through that uh, maze. Now this is um, uh, jailbreak, I think. Yeah, the last one I think was blind man's bluff. And you just try to push through the walls where you can, where those uh, squares are, and make your way to the end of the maze that way. I, mean, I could do without the sound effects. Otherwise, the uh, the game's somewhat playable. And then eventually you'll find your way to the end. Ta -da. Ah, so annoying. It's like an alarm clock going off or something. And now this one is... Oh, what is this? Trailblazer? Yeah. I think this is Trailblazer. You just try to try to feel around where you wherever you go and see if you can find a uh, turn. Eventually, you get to the end. Ta -da. And now we're going to look at game number eleven, and this is backgammon and AC Ducey. 
I don't know really how to play backgammon, so I couldn't get very far on this. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't play a full game. I just, uh, I just uh, rolled the dice there and then like moved a, a, a piece a couple times. Yeah, if you know how to play backgammon, you might get some enjoyment out of this. Very, very graphically crude, though. And like I said, the second game on this cart is called AC Doocy. And it is actually backgammon, but it has a different arrangement of the pieces to start. Uh, like there. Now we're going to look at game number 12, and this is baseball. And it's really, for, for its time, it could have been a lot worse. Um, you will just, you know, swing the bat on offense, pitch on a defense, and you can move the uh, fielders left and right. And uh, when the ball is hit, it'll either be a, a, a single or in the first uh, first instance it was a foul ball but it can either be a single double triple or a home run depending on what the computer uh, does and you just try to move your infielders so they get in the way of the ball and it touches them then that's an automatic out but that's really all there is to baseball you know for uh, 1977 was when it released. For 1977, it could have been a lot worse. And we're just looking at snippets of gameplay. Just try to move the fielders in the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can change the direction of the ball when you pitch. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're going to look at game number 13, which is Robot War and Torpedo Alley. And uh, Robot War is kind of a weird little game. You have these robots that follow you around, and you try to guide them into these squares so that they get destroyed. And if they touch you, I think, like four or five times, then uh, you, will, you will die, and you want to destroy all the robots so you can get a point, I think. And if they manage to touch you enough and kill you, then they get a point. Kind of weird little game. But like I said, this is a, a multi-cart. This has a second game on it, which is called Torpedo Alley. And we'll look at that in just a moment. Yeah, they changed the arrangement of the uh, squares. And this is just basically a uh, kind of air-sea battle. You can uh, change the direction of your turret and take out these submarines above you. Now we're going to look at game number 14, and this is Sonar Search. And this is this is kind of stupid, but this is like a battleship, the uh, board game. But you're trying to find these, uh, these battleships by uh, moving the cursor around on the C and pressing the button. And you might be able to find a part of the battleship. Then you will need to start uh, uh, pressing the button around there. Yeah, there I found a part of the battleship. And you want to try to find all the battleships. And each time you miss, it takes off uh, one from your, uh, from your meter down at the bottom left, where it says 57. And if you run down to zero and you haven't found all the battleships, you, you lose. So you just want to try to find them all. But we're scooting forward, so we'll see what it looks like to have uh, uncovered them, uncovered a number of them. But uh, I lost because I didn't find them all. And then it shows you where they all were. Now we're going to look at game number 15, and this is Memory Match. This is... Uh, Actually, Memory Match 1 and 2. And this is this is basically concentration. You can have uh, 
you can have numbers. I think in this you can also select uh, to find symbols, but you just try to match match the numbers, and each turn costs you a point on the left, and you get points for finding matches, and there you will get seven points for the number seven, and you just try to end up with a uh, higher number on the right than the left once you have uh, completed all the, the cards. Sorry, the uh, sounds didn't always match on here. <laughs> but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, finish that off. So I easily won. Now we're going to look at uh, game number 16, and this is called Dodge It. And uh, this was released in 1978. And this is kind of interesting. You have a little uh, blue square, and all you try to do is avoid getting hit by that bouncing ball. It's kind of hard to see where the ball enters the play field, but eventually it will be joined by more balls. If you're right by where the ball is about to enter the play field, you might get hit automatically, which sucks. But you try to just try to avoid getting hit, and those balls can ricochet off each other. And you just try to stay alive as long as you can because you get a point, uh, bonus points for staying alive. And you see the uh, bonus point meter rising as I continue to avoid getting hit. An interesting little bit of game. I don't know why that one ball was hugging the ceiling. Well, this is game number 17, and this is uh, Pinball Challenge. And no, it is not actually pinball. This is Breakout. <laughs> this is like Breakout, Atari's uh, Breakout. But you just try to uh, uh, use uh, the paddle and knock the ball through all the bricks and go to the next uh, set of bricks. And the controls, I cannot get over it. They are fantastic for this game. Know that you can actually leave the play field a little bit with the paddle <laughs> through the uh, left and right holes. But uh, this is this. The controls are fantastic on this. I can I kind of dig this. Again, I'm not sure what all modes you can do with uh, the various games. We'll scoot forward to me uh, breaking the last brick. Eh, crap. <laughs> But yeah, that's like Breakout. And then uh, the next game, game number 18, is Hangman. This is the classic uh, classic uh, puzzle game where you try to uh, try to solve the mystery word by the alphabet letters. Yeah, that's annoying. But uh, it shows your uh, guy actually hang. <laughs> and... Uh, unless you uh, solve the word. And if you solve the word, then you see him uh, jump free from the, the noose. <laughs> kind of cool. But the uh, sound effects are annoying. <laughs> Virgin. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think I solved this word this time. But you gotta uh, uh, scroll through the different, different letters to try to find uh, the answer or the mystery word. Uh, wonder what that word is. We're already Yeah, you you get the the head, each arm, the body, one leg, and then the other leg, and I, he's almost uh, hanged. Yeah, come on. What is that word? It's, oh, apple probably.
<laughs> he jumps free of the noose. <laughs> I like that animation there. Uh, now we're going to look at game number 19, and this is checkers. I don't really know how to play checkers very well, so we'll just we'll just look at a little bit of of gameplay. Moving pieces and uh, jumping pieces. I never really played checkers or chess much. Yeah, definitely going to get jumped there. But uh, now we're going to look at video whiz ball. And this is uh, game number 20. Yeah. <laughs> and try to remember how this plays. Uh, it's it's like two player and you try to Ugh, that's horrible and you can shoot a ball at the other player or you can shoot these little uh, these little barriers that bounce up and down and you can shoot the barrier at the other player it's kind of a stupid game there can be uh, more barriers joining the quote-unquote fun. Yeah, there's, uh, there's an extra couple barriers and they bounce off of each other. And they can bounce towards the other player. But that is uh, video whiz ball. And now we're going to look at game number 21, bowling. This is this is incredibly simplified. What kind of sucks is, well, you might be able to change the speed of the ball. The ball will move left and right rapidly, and you just press up when you're ready to bowl it from that position. And you might be able to uh, tinker in the mode to make the ball move slower. And you can change the, uh, the curve of the ball part way through it, it uh, rolling. And get Spares and strikes, and you know, the the usual, and it goes through uh, ten frames. But uh, yeah, it's it's kind of similar to uh, 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 four-player bowling in the arcades back in the late seventies. That one I really liked, but it had better sounds than this. We'll just scoot forward to me uh, completing. Ugh. <laughs> that was hard on the ears. <laughs> well, at any rate, uh, now we're going to look at slot machine, and this is game number 22. And it just has a slot machine, and <laughs> well, it says, Welcome Big Casino. You can uh, uh, play a slot machine, you can uh, determine how much money you have, and you can determine how much it costs for each spin on the slot machine. I think I ended up giving myself 50 bucks. Yeah, there we go. And uh, you just pull the slot machine, and there's like uh, hearts, uh, bells, uh, goblets. Uh, it's very, very uh, crudely rendered. Uh, getting one cherry, I think, gives you five cents back, and getting two cherries in the first window gives you 10 cents back, I think. I, I don't remember for sure. But at any rate, uh, very simple game of a slot machine. I never got anything really big on this. It's, yeah, it's really hard to tell what, what those symbols are supposed to be. But there is also an H, or no, there's an F, I think, as one of the symbols for uh, you know, Fairchild Channel F. Now we're going to look at Galactic Space Wars, and this also has Lunar Lander on it. Uh, this is game number 23. And Galactic Space Wars is like the old uh, arcade classic Starfire. First person perspective, uh, flying through space, and you fire your twin lasers on uh, any enemies that you come across. Just try to destroy as many enemies as you can within the time limit. You see it's ticking down, it's in green there. And there's uh, like parameters, space parameters on the on the left as you fly around. And there's the twin lasers, and you just keep flying until you see an enemy, and then 
line it up to where your lasers will hit it. We're just scooting through the various parts of the game. There I destroyed two enemies as the far right indicator and we'll scoot forward to me uh, just about out of time here. Eh. Not very good. And this is Lunar Lander. It's a terrible recreation of the uh, Atari Black and White Classic. Ah, just really annoying. Really bad controls. It, it's not very good at all. You just try to land on the uh, pad as gently as you can. Ah, crap. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at this. But this is just a really, really poor rendering of this. And note that as you use your thrusters, you, uh, you bring down the uh, number on the far left. You don't want to run out of fuel. Just gotta land very, 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 very carefully. Oops. But yeah, controls. Oh, this really sucks, and there was a successful landing. And uh, now we're going to look at game number 24, and this is pro football. It's bleh. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> at any rate, this is literally X's and O's, <laughs> or X's and squares. But uh, you can change the formation. And uh, you, can, you can run or pass. And when you pass, you'll see a big X uh, leave the player that you're controlling. And uh, <laughs> I didn't really know what I was doing at, at first. Um, I started going the wrong way. You can't make a safety by uh, going out of your own. Really, really crude music. <laughs> yeah, there was there was hardly any music on the uh, channel F, and what there was wasn't very good. And we'll see me uh, throw a pass here. I'm kind of under uh, under pressure here, and there's a pass, and I got tackled. But at any rate, now we're going to look at Casino Poker, game number 25. We're almost uh, done with the games because there were only uh, 26 official releases of games, and there were the two that came with the system. Um, but uh, we'll just look at a little bit of uh, gameplay of Casino Poker. And to start things off, uh, there will be a demo, I guess, unless you interrupt it. And there will be uh, three players playing, just like in the uh, earlier uh, card game, uh, Video Blackjack. And uh, you get a you get a bet, you get a call or raise or whatever, and uh, eventually you'll see your your cards. And uh, one player uh, one player folded, and there's a player on the right one because they had uh, two jacks. And now we're going to look at the final game, game number twenty six, Alien Invasion, and this is Space Invaders, and this is this might be one of my favorite games for the Fairchild. The controls are good. Um, the uh, movement of the invaders is very very well done. Feels very uh, arcade similar. There's a, a mode you can play in this where uh, you have double shots and I don't remember how I did that but I didn't play it that way in this game. Uh, you might be able to uh, choose how many lives you want to start. Yeah, there's just simple little beeps and boops. Very, very simple, but it it plays quite well, really. And you have the uh, bonus point UFO come out at one point right, right there. The way that it counts up the points in this game is kind of kind of funky. But uh, once you get hit, you just flash. And then you hear a little sound effect, and then you have to wait a while until your next uh, life starts playing. And uh, when you're on your last life and you lose it, 
then the, the ship just keeps flashing and it doesn't stop. But yeah, this is one of my favorite games on the uh, Fairchild Channel F. We will also look at the uh, pack-in games, uh, tennis and hockey. There were also two uh, demo cards, one that told you how to play the uh, or uh, mode, time, uh, start, uh, game uh, options work. And then there was one that just showed a, a brief demo of some of the other games. And there's the, the chess game that was only released in Germany. But, um, yeah, this is this time we're going to look at uh, hockey and tennis. And this is hockey. And you have two sets of paddles that you can move. And uh, you don't want to accidentally ricochet the ball off your own paddle and through your own goal to give the uh, opponent a point. But this is uh, hockey and this is the, the one of the games that came with the system and you could choose hockey by pressing game number one if you did not have a cart in the system. And you could choose tennis by playing uh, pushing button number two on the Fairchild uh, console if you did not have a cart in the system. And this is tennis right here. It's just Pong. Um, but there are uh, weird weird angles that, that uh, the ball takes off of your paddle, even if you're uh, facing it straight on. You can move the paddles towards the net or away from the net and up and down. And here is demo cart number one. And there was also demo cart number two. And we're going to look at demo cart number one. And it gives you instructions on how to uh, navigate the G, T, S, M <laughs> menus. This was also called, called Fairchild Video Entertainment Center. And they had to change the name of that because it was too similar to uh, uh, Atari's... Uh, video computer system or whatever they called it so they ended up just changing it to uh, channel F but here's uh, here's that demo cart we're gonna look at and this is very informative but even reading all of this can still it it's still a confusing setup for the uh, one two three four buttons for changing your mode uh, uh, changing the time for various games. You just really have to get used to it, and I'm still not really used to it. But this is a very, very cool, uh, informative little demo. I don't know how much the uh, demo carts cost. And uh, they were released in 1976 and 1977. <laughs> if you screw up their directions, they'll say, No! <laughs> Stupid! <laughs> There's there's some things to admire to like about the Fairchild Channel F. The more I play it, the more I see those uh, positive things. But really, yeah, the music, uh, the or the sound effects, uh, the graphics, the uh, colors, really, really, really limited. Uh, Atari came out. The Atari 2600 or Atari VCS came out the following year and just blew this out of the water. <laughs> But for for being the very first second generation console, it had a it had some interesting things to uh, to offer. And yeah, here it says you can select the time. You can't do that on every cart. Uh, you can't always select the time. You can't always select the mode. Uh, stuff like that. Yeah, you. Know, you you might not be able to pause the game uh, on every cart and you do that with the hold button button number three but again the buttons there's a power switch there's a reset switch there's button number one which acts as time uh, select uh, 
or two minutes or you can play hockey with no cart in the slot number two is the mode button uh, you can change certain settings about the game you can set it to five minutes if you have uh, the time setting on or you could play uh, tennis the other pack in game if you have no cart in the slot and with button number three you can it's called hold and you can hold it down and pause some games I guess or if you have time uh, selection you can select 10 minutes uh, or you can play uh, uh, one of the games that you have in a multi cart that's in the slot and with button number four you will start a game or if you have time selection on you can select 20 minutes or you can play the second game in the multi cart that you have put in the uh, game slot <laughs> and this is uh, this is uh, uh, was this hockey that we're looking at uh, looking at something something about it yeah but this is uh, the the demo cart uh, one that we're looking at and yeah you can see that you can change the change the way the paddles move or the if they're if you can if you want you can put them at an angle via the uh, mode selection and then I think we were going to take a brief look at uh, demo cart number two <laughs> uh, yeah or yeah this is demo cart number two the box for the demo cards were very very plain and it just shows you a screenshot of each game uh, not not every single game but probably about seven or eight or so I think maybe more than that but that's enough that was my look at the Fairchild Channel F and I gotta say it it has some interesting things it's very limited but for 1976 really it was it was pretty innovative some interesting things to uh, to offer the home video game console industry. There was nothing like it at the time. There were mostly only uh, the mag the crappy Magnavox Odyssey one and uh, Pong uh, home console uh, ripoffs. But that was my look at the Fairchild Channel F system released in late 1976. Well, I thank you very much for watching. I thought this was kind of interesting to look at. And uh, I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you enjoy football tomorrow, if that's your thing. My team doesn't play until Monday night. But um, I hope to see you soon for uh, another video. I will be re-uploading some of my uh, 20 from videos pretty soon. I'll see you then, folks. Bye-bye.